In this video, we are given some terms of sequences. And what we need to do is identify the first term and the term to term rule for each sequence. Let's start with question A. Straight away, we can write down what the first term is. We can see right here that the first term of the sequence is four. What we also need to find is the term to term rule. What are we doing to turn a 4 into a 9, a 9 into a 14, a 14 into a 19, and so on? Well, hopefully you can see that this sequence is going up in equal steps. It's going up in steps of 5. That means the term to term rule is add 5. What we also need to do is work out the next two terms in each sequence. So now that we know that the term to term rule is to add 5, we simply add 5 to 24 to get this term here, which is 29. And then we add 5 to 29 to get the next term, and that gives us 34. Pause the video and have a go at question B for yourself. You should have found that the first term is 23. And the term to term rule is subtract 6. To find this term of the sequence, we need to subtract 6 from negative 1, and that gets us to negative 7. To find the next term, we need to subtract 6 from negative 7, and that takes us to negative 13. In question C, we haven't got the first term, so we can't write that down straight away. So let's see if we can find the term to term rule. What do we need to do to go from 6 to 12 and 12 to 24 and 24 to 48? Now, at first, you might be thinking we add 6. Well, that does get you from 6 to 12. But if you add 6 to 12, it doesn't get you to 24. And if you add 6 to 24, it doesn't get you to 48. So adding 6 is not what we're doing here. In fact, what we're doing is multiplying by a particular number. Can you see what we're multiplying by? Hopefully you've spotted that we are multiplying by 2. I can see that 6 times 2 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24, 24 times 2 is 48. So I can use that to find the next two terms. 48 times 2 is 96, and 96 times 2 is 192. I haven't finished yet because I haven't worked out the first term but it's now quite easy to work out. What number, when we multiply it by two, will give us six? Remember, we're multiplying by two to go this way. So hopefully you can see that we need that to be three because three times two would be six. Another way to find this first term, by the way, would be to work backwards. If you know that going forwards along this sequence involves multiplying by two, then going the other way, would mean dividing by 2. For example, 48 divided by 2 is 24, 24 divided by 2 is 12, 12 divided by 2 is 6, and 6 divided by 2 gives us 3, which is the first term we're looking for. Pause the video and have a go at question D. Here's what you should have found. We are dividing by 10 from one term to the next, so that's our term to term rule. Carrying on from 0 0.1, dividing that by 10 we get 0 0.01 and to get to the next term we need to divide this by 10 and that's going to give us 0 0.001. Working backwards you'll see we are multiplying by 10 so this first term will be 100 times 10 and that's a thousand. So the first term of this sequence is 1000. Finally, we've got these two extra questions down here. Let's focus on this one. Is the number 37 in sequence A? One way of doing this would be to continue the sequence. Remember, the term to term rule is add 5. So the next term in the sequence would be 39. And you can see that we've gone from 34 to 39 and we've passed over 37. 
we also know that this sequence is increasing because we keep adding 5. So we're never going to get to 37 in the future. So we could use that as an explanation for why 37 is not in the sequence. We go from 34 to 39 and the sequence increases thereafter. However, that's not a good method in general because I could change the question and ask, is the number 837 in the sequence? And it would be a real pain to keep listing out the terms of this sequence until we get somewhere near 837 to see if it actually turns up in the sequence or we end up skipping over it. So here's a much better way of thinking about these kinds of questions. Notice this sequence is going up in steps of five. That means it's a bit like the five times table. Except because we didn't start off at five, it's not exactly like the five times table. And in fact, you should notice that each term in this sequence is one less than a multiple of five. Four is one less than five. Nine is one less than 10. 14 is one less than 15 and so on. So our five times table would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and so on. And you'll see that these are just one less than those numbers. So because 38 is not in the five times table, I know that 37 is not going to be in this sequence. And for the same reason, I know that 837 won't be in the sequence either. Here's how I would write my answer. No, 37 is not in the sequence, and that's because each term in the sequence must be one less than a multiple of five. And clearly 37 is not one less than a multiple of five. Let's have a look at the other question then. This one is asking, is the number negative 61 in sequence B? Now, again, a slow way of doing this would be to keep listing out the terms of this sequence until we either get to negative 61 or we end up skipping over it. However, there is a smarter way. Notice we're subtracting 6 from term to term. Also, notice that negative 1 is in this sequence. What we are trying to decide is if negative 61 is in this sequence. Now, to get from negative 1 to negative 61, hopefully you can see straight away that we would need to subtract 60. And subtracting 60 is actually the same as subtracting 6 10 times. So if we go 10 terms further along in this sequence, we will actually get to negative 61 exactly. So now we know that negative 61 is in the sequence. So I'd write my answer as yes. Notice that the negative one here is the one, two, three, four, fifth term of the sequence. And I said if you go 10 terms further along, you're going to end up subtracting 10 lots of six to get to the negative 61. And that means negative 61 is going to be the 15th term in the sequence. It's 10 terms further along than the fifth term. So negative 61 is the 15th term of the sequence. So I'm explaining that I know it's in the sequence by proving that I know exactly where in the sequence it turns up.